yes, my grandfather was the inspiration for this movie. He fought in the First World War from 1916 to 1918. He arrived as a 17-year-old. Um, he told us many stories when I was maybe 10, 11, 12 years old. Um, and for whatever reason, I've never forgotten them. And he told us one particular story about carrying a message through no man's land that wouldn't let me go. I felt it was a story I had to tell. Um, so I took that very small fragment and enlarged it, developed it, and turned the journey into a much longer journey. Um, and then I felt it was the best way to tell the story was to tell it in real time, you know, uh, to follow him every a step of the way. And then we uh, came up with a friend that he was traveling with, um, and it grew from there, really. I decided to shoot it in one because I didn't want the audience to be able to escape. Um, I wanted them to be experiencing every second of the journey with the men, every footstep, every, every you know, 100 yards. I wanted them to feel getting closer and closer and closer, and I didn't want to um, feel like uh, uh, there was any escape. Um, and I suppose there was <clears throat> the biggest challenge was that in film, one of the nice things about movies is that you don't have to make some of the big decisions until after you finish filming. You know, editing, it's nice and calm, you got a cup of coffee, you can try this version of the scene and that version of the scene. You can cut a scene entirely, you can put a scene in a different place, all of those things, and that's fun. It's my favorite part of filmmaking. And in this movie, it didn't happen. <laughs> I had to make all those decisions while we were shooting. Um, rhythm, pace, tempo, everything had to be exactly right before I could move on. And, um, and so, you know, it was, it was hard, uh, but very rewarding. You know, my, my way to direct actors is always the same. Is every actor is different and every actor needs something different from the director. Um, but I wanted two unknown or relative unknown actors because I wanted the audience to have a new relationship with them. And I didn't want to know, I didn't want the audience to guess who might live or who might die, who was the hero, who wasn't the hero. Um, and I wanted to give them the feeling that these two men were just two amongst five million, uh, just two ordinary soldiers. So um, in that respect, uh, you know, we rehearsed a lot. One of the challenges was we couldn't build a set until we'd rehearsed the scene first, so we had to judge the distance between everything, um, exactly how long a wood would be, or a, or a, or a orchard, or a road, or a river. We had to judge distance before we could even start designing it. So it was very, very time consuming. Uh, but it meant that the actors were rehearsing for months. Uh, and in that process, they kind of became the two characters. And the experience of shooting it was more like living it than acting it. So I'm going to say this answer to the camera. Please don't watch this movie on your phone. Please don't watch it on your computer screen. Don't even watch it on your television screen. Please come to the cinema to see it. Because the image is not the only immersive thing about it. The sound, the music, it's designed as an experience as much as, as a, a, a movie. So I really hope you uh, take the risk and come out and watch it with uh, your friends or your family or just strangers, because that's how I imagined it.